Ah, oh, finally! Ah, oh, finally! Oh. Ugh. Oh, I finally get to play this game. Okay. Uh, Apollo Justice State's Attorney. So, it is actually... <laughs> voice crack. It is actually Phoenix Wright. What? There's like three games here. One of them is Apollo Justice, and the other two are Phoenix Wright. So! Uh... We get to play whichever games that are available. So yes, the first game, Apollo Justice. The second one, uh, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Dual Destiny. And the third one, Ace, uh, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Spirit of Justice. So, oh god, live. Yes. So we're gonna do Contradiction Time! Oh god, uh, what's the fourth one? Museum. Okay, so we're not gonna do the museum. We're gonna do Apollo Justice. So, I have played Apollo Justice before. I liked it. I wanted to get back into it. And I enjoyed it. So, new game. I don't know, how many cases were there? If you've ever seen my Phoenix Strike, uh... Let's play, you'll know what I, what's going on. Turn about Trump. Oh god, the word turn about Trump. Hmm. Hmm. So, yeah, every single case is a murder mystery. Who done it, and how can you prove it? Mm. This is how the game starts out. I seem to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him hard. Me? Please. The cops should be here any minute. Why, is someone asking if he did it? I'm in your hands, should it come to that. Ah. Interesting! April 20th, 9.37 a.m. District Court Lobby. Defendant Lobby number three. Panicked. Palm sweaty. I can't, I can't admit it. I'm nervous. I get gamer anxiety here and there. Ah, good morning. G good morning, sir. You look tense, Justice. Wound up tight. W wound up, sir? No, I'm loose. I'm fine. That screeching noise. Is that your voice? I suppose it's to be expected. Your first trial, and it's a homicide. I guess justice doesn't start small, eh? Kristoff. So we play as... Uh, we play as Apollo Justice in this game, not as Phoenix Wright. In one case in this game, we actually do play as Phoenix Wright, but that one does not end well. So, what do we have here? Badge, how long are you in front of these? You're putting on, makes me feel ready. Smith's autopsy report. Time of death was around 2 a.m. April 17th, death caused by a single blow in the forehead. Crime photos, sub-basement of the Porsche Bowl Club. And then we have these. Christoph Gavin, age 32, boss at Gavin Law Offices, first rate defense attorney, and my trusted mentor. Question mark, question mark. My first client just standing in front of this guy makes me nervous. Shady Smith, the victim of the case, traveler, only recently back in country. Okay, so that's what we have to work with. All right. Uh, I'm fine! I got up at 5 a.m. to do my court to steal a voice workout, I'm fine! Ah, that explains it. I did detect a certain rasping quality to your speech. <laughs> I ordered it again! Ah, uh, tisk tisk. As you know, your client today is a good friend of mine. I wouldn't want to let him down. 
if you get my drift, or the back of my hand. <laughs> drift gone, sir! I'm all over that drift! As it happens, I dine with him the night of the murder. Really? We can't let this case fall through. Yes! Yes, I'm fine, sir! One more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. Because it's one thing to play defense. Because playing defense that many times gets everybody to play offense. People might take you the wrong way. Like on a football team. <laughs> Go! I'll be preparing our case. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. Oh, God. <laughs> Who's the client? My name is Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, I'm a new attorney. And today is my first trial. Not that I'm worried or anything. The defendant has been accused of murder. My boss wants him to help him out, of course, and so do I. Oh god, I make him sound like a young little whippersnapper. I mean, there's no way he did it. Not him, no way. Oh, there he is. And who is this? Whoa! Good, uh, morning. Morning. It's all up to you today. First trial, nervous, medium, cardiac arrest. My heart is gonna stop! Ah, never mind. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to say something. Uh, help! So you're... Fine, not fine! Ah, heart. No. Uh, Mr. Fine, is it? Uh, I did remember you having an odd name. Well, we're off to a great start. Um, are you sure you're okay? I mean, with me? Don't tell me you got it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gavin is a top-notch defense attorney. And he's your friend. Uh, oh, no, anyway. And he's your friend, so that's why. You'll see. Hmm? Oh! Uh. You can do it. Be confident. Uh, um, I... I'm really sorry this happened to me. I mean... I mean, I... It's time. Shall we? <laughs> like inviting us to go up on stage and present ourselves to everybody. <laughs> yes, sir! Oh, God, the Apollo voice. I'm... My voice is gonna get so raspy. Ugh. I need to focus. First trial! Here comes justice! That voice is probably terrible. April 20th, 10 a.m., district court, room number two. Court is now in session. The prosecution is ready, your honor. Uh, the defense is, uh, fine. I mean, ready, your honor. I'm going blank. Don't panic. Ah, too late. Your name was Mr. Justice, and this is your first trial? Yes, yes, your honor. But I'm fine, really. Are you quite sure? Your voice sounds a little bit strange. But again, who am I to complain? Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Gavin? Yes, your honor. I was under the impression that you'll be heading up the case. That was my intention, yes. However, the defense attorney must always see to his client's wishes. And my client specifically requested Mr. Justice. Well, of course he wants justice, but to entrust this case to this greenhorn, why? I do not exaggerate when I say that you're the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Okay, Gavin's got trial experience, fine, but does he have cords of steel? Ugh. Let us begin, the defendant may enter the courtroom. Hmm, who is this person, I wonder? This is truly an unfortunate turn of events. I'm sorry we had to meet again under these circumstances. Long time no see, Mr. Wright. Hmm. Phoenix Wright. Let's put the past behind us, shall we? These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright, piano player. Oh, God. <laughs> Mr. Wright! How could this have happened? I won't speak of it further, then. If the prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges... Mr. Payne? To thank you, 
that I saw you enter this room, a fresh attorney, and now I'll see you leave in chains. Ah, oh, Winston Payne, subtle as ever, I see. Hmm, or is obvious, because that's comedy. Ahem! The crime scene entered at the Bullish Ball Club, a Russian restaurant. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, took the victim, a customer, and he hit him! Wham! On the head! Smack! Killed him cold! Mm, the customer at the restaurant, you see? Say? Oh, uh, what am I saying? The defendant, you say he was? <laughs> the pianist for the club, it seems. Phoenix Wright! A pianist? It is the weapon that took the victim's life. A bottle of grape juice. Grape juice is apparently our defendant's drink of choice. The court accepts this deadly bottle as evidence. Uh, grape juice bottle uses murder weapon, bears the defendant, Mr. Rice Prince. I need to look at that. Because that allows me to examine. Um. Great juice! How long is it? It's an egg great juice! Apparently it's Mr. Wright's favorite drink! I wonder how well it goes with Bosch! Because of the thing. Um... This bottle's completely empty! Yes! Oh god, the way I do Apollo Justice's voice. Uh... Is there anything in the photo... Here... No, can't see his eyes, but of course. Huh. Uh, Shitty Smith, a something male, estimated time of death, April between 1.45 and 2.15 a.m. Cause of death, cerebral hemorrhaging, resulting in blood trauma to the forehead. Hmm. Okay. I see. Some, something to note, Justice. All evidence is filed in the court record. Make a practice of checking it frequently. Done. The court record! Right! I've heard of it! Use R1 to look at the evidence so far. What is R1? Don't ask me. Ask the developers. <laughs> I'm confident in your ability to handle this. Because you're the anime protagonist. <laughs> right! Use this button! The victim was a customer at the restaurant! But just who is this um, shitty Smith fellow? <laughs> we believe he was a traveler, your honor. A traveler? According to this passport, he had been out of the country for a number of years. Wait, wasn't the original version like Shady Smith was a drifter, but in this one he's a traveler? Huh. He had only returned to this country recently through this place. Of residence is unclear. And he had some sort of connection with the defendant? That's it, too, is unclear at the present, Your Honor. We believe they first met at the Bosch Ball Club on the night of the crime. If they had only just met, then why murder? Perhaps the victim slighting the defendant's piano playing? That doesn't appear to have been the case. No, the motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skill. At least not piano playing. I'll let this photo explain what I mean. Uh huh. As we can see, a game of poker was in progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second! Is a poker gambling? That's a crime in it! Of <coughs> itself! Mm. Indeed, it, se it appears our defendant has fallen to become the basis sort of criminal. Objection! It is true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. It was only that, a game, in the pure sense. A competition, Your Honor. A competition? Yes, a test of wits. Silent class of passions. Clash of passions. Only the cards, the backs, wreathed in blue, know its final art. What? By... This... Photo is black and white. How you know the color of the cards? Uh, uh, come again. The cards on the table are blue backs, Yana. I believe the defense was waxing portics in an attempt to mystify those present. How would he know the cards had blue? I wonder. And 
you press all then? It'll be your first old minutes here, then, to find out more about this fatal game of cards. Hmm. Very well defended. Well, just what? <coughs> I'm gonna save it. Just find the quartz above the poker competition held at night of the crime. My pleasure. This is it! My first trial! Here goes nothing! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> the way I make him voice is like he's just strangling himself on the bench. The competition. I'm a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. Like me! <laughs> My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. The room where we play and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. Two? That's all it is. A game. And our customers are happy. So, it's not gambling? <laughs> piano, scrub, play piano! Better than a defense attorney who can't defend. <coughs> God, everybody's voice is horrible. <laughs> the first way to the cross examination. Right, Your Honor. My first cross examination. Don't blow it. Are you all right? You're sweating bullets. Bullets? Where? Who's shooting a gun in here? The figure of speech, Justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy too. My brain. Uh, my brain feels strained and raspy, sir. You've watched me perform cross-examinations many times. Though you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? What do you do? Should I ask Mr. Gavin for a refresher? No! I know what to do! No need for help here, sir! I think I've got this one covered! I think you better do more than think, you know? Or you do not. I'm going the court you all are ready for battle! My weapons, press and present! Find any inconsistencies in lines of testimony and reveal them to the court. This is cross ex that is cross examination. Learn it, know it, do it. Bop it, twist it, and whatever else. Like a weird toy from the 90s. Inconsistencies! Lies! Phoenix Wright! As if Phoenix Wright would never lie, and it's up to me to prove it! The first may begun the cross examination! Hmm. Okay. Where to start? I'm a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play piano at all. Then why do it? Hold it! Oh, no, wait. Um. Hold, hold it. it! You can hardly play. Oh, I play sometimes when customers make it. So I play them one song. That's usually all they want. Was that supposed to be a boast just now? The title pianist is a mask, a respectable face I wear for the world at large. Why are you really a- <coughs> Oh god, this voice. Why are you really a- The Borscht Bowl Club? My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. Hold it! They pay you just to play poker? That would seem to be the case. I am a professional after all. I, do I detect pride in that statement? It's just hard for an honest, hard-working member of society like me to imagine. Yes, your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. Uh, ooh, what? I played poker for seven years in that little room, and I've never lost once. What? How? <laughs> you see why customers come now. Defeat the undefeated poker champion. It's quite a draw. That is, I'm quite a draw. Because you never won. You never lost. But did you ever win? What? Wait, you never lost once? Not even one time? As I said, I'm a professional. <laughs> He's played poker for seven years and not lost once? Is that even possible? The room where we play in competition are all the main... The... Club's main attraction. Hold it! The room in the crime scene photo is an attraction. It has quite a history, actually. The Bush Bull Club used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day. Ha! Black market. All in the past, things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays, not the golden screen. 
<laughs> Suffice to say that there are a lot of dealings being made under the table. Or over the table? No. <laughs> right there in that room. The smoky room! Gambling hoods! <laughs> you know! Just look at this picture and make me feel bad! <coughs> God, the voices. The bosses gather around the table, cutting deals safe from the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, a goon keeps watch through the small window. I can practically picture it now. That window looks like it would be good for keeping a lookout, but little else. The room had other few tricks to it. Though it was common knowledge to our regulars. At any rate, they come to play poker in a room steeped in history. Despite the dark past, it was all just good. Clean fun. So there was no gambling. The rule is simple. We play a game using two decks of cards. Hold it! Hold it! Two decks of cards! A simple measure to prevent cheating. If you alter alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. There's something else I notice! In addition to call to the table, there are also some lying scattered on the floor. Uh huh. Precisely. Cause on the table, cause upon the floor. Each one forming a complete deck. A crime scene painted blue by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. Incidentally, we used two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards was red, the other was blue. Yeah, but that brings up another question. Why is Kristoff saying there's only blue? Are we questioning Phoenix or are we questioning Kristoff? <laughs> As I recall, the poker you make of five card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. Heh. <laughs> yes, a game of hands. <clears throat> this competition you're talking about, I believe the court understands the nature of the game sufficiently. That's right. It was a simple game after all. <coughs> are you sure? <coughs> huh? People are not murdered over simple games, Mr. Justice. Defendant, you are in the room at the very moment the crime occurred. Do you claim no connection <coughs> to the crime? Now that's strange. What's strange? I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, Your Honor. The defendant lecturing the judge on the rules. Of course, I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense. Ah! I completely let that one slip by. Don't despair yet, Justice. Sir! Right, there's something I'd like made clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand, and I'd like to hear it from you. Hmm, sure. Why not? Very well, the defendant will amend his testimony. Just, just one little press, and I've got myself a whole new testimony. I plead silence regarding the murder, but I will say I never touched the murder weapon. Say you didn't touch the murder weapon. This grape juice bottle. Right? Mr. Right? So I said. Something the matter, Mr. Justice? Hee 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 hee. Too bad our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb. What's this, Mr. Payne? I examined the bottle in question, you see. And it was covered with the defense fingerprints. Okay, now we're getting some connection here. Objection! You need to show, Mr. Justice. I can hear you fine. <laughs> Excellent yelling can damage a judge's ears. And our case. And my vocal cords! But, what about my cords of steel? Any, anyway. What's so strange about the fingerprints on the bottle in the restaurant? Well, what's the point? The point's a little Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Huh? But in the fingerprints of the murder weapon, we're upside down. Upside down? What does that mean? <laughs> it means 
Mary Jane was holding the bottle inverted, and there can be only one reason for that. Hmm. Yes, to bring someone with the bottle. <laughs> Mr. Gavin, I think things just took a turn for the worse. Oh, I see no problem, Justice. Eh. Ha! The only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything. You'll see. To Vernon, keep playing fingerprints on the bottle of the court. I stand by my plea of silence regarding the murder. For now. Hmm, not very cooperative, are you? This could hurt your case. I'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding something. There must be some reason. Objection! Your honor, you seem to have forgotten something. And what might that be, Mr. Gavin? On the night of the crime, who was it that reported the murder to the police? Reported? <coughs> well, that was a defendant, Mr. Wright, but still that... Really? Um, yes, well, according to the case file, the murder was reported from near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Near the scene? Let's take a look at the diagram of the murder scene, shall we? The victim was murdered in a small room in the basement, two floors down from the ground level. Of course, cell phones can't get a reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in this hallway to go above the ground. from the first floor of the restaurant. The scene is the phone that made the call. Hmm. <coughs> okay, I probably need to look at that. Um. Is there anything off about the phone? Ha, huh, it's taped shut. Wow, the battery's being held with a piece of tape. All right, there's nothing else about the phone. Uh, uh, <coughs> The defendant could have just left the scene, yet he fulfilled his duty as a citizen and reported to the authorities. And you claim he is uh, being uncooperative? Uh, uh, I say, Miss Gavin, I better not waste this. I think the prosecution has toyed with a client for enough for the time being. Toyed? I assure you, no one is more serious about. What is it you said? The defendant was in the room the very moment the crime occurred. How can you possibly know this? It's a good question! How indeed! The answer is simple, Your Honor. The prosecution has a sight of witness. Hee 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 hee! You're as good as they say you are! So someone was in the room the night of the crime! It must mean that it witnessed the crime! <coughs> Everything up until now has been a warm up, Justice. Are you ready? To be a contender, Beth. 